morning. I am Dr. Kaushal Kumar Bhagat, currently working as assistant professor in uh, Advanced Technology Development Center at IIT Kharagpur. My core area or research area is extended reality, which combines augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and also gamification. The basic application we are working for AR VR is in the domain of education and training. I am in this field. I think almost I have completed almost ten uh, years. So I started my journey of uh, virtual reality and augmented reality in two thousand thirteen. As I started my PhD in two thousand thirteen, so almost ten years uh, I am in this field, and uh, I am very optimistic about this field. Yes, there are some ups and downs are there, but uh, it's an adventurous journey that uh, we are joining this and uh, we are continuing this. i think uh, i will divide into four or five sections you know so i will suggest that uh, pre 2010 we have this uh, oculus uh, and it was not specifically for the commercial purpose that was uh, being used for the military that was being uh, used for some industrial application and then after that we have uh, 2013 so we have the stc vive and then oculus has also launched a commercial product which is for you know from 2013 to 16 and uh, then there was a game uh, pokemon you know so that changed the whole scenario so and people understood okay this is augmented reality and uh, that has changed the dynamic of the market also and uh, uh, in fact i think countries like china Uh, us spain um they celebrated in japan also they celebrated in 2016 and then we have the 2016 to 18 then we have new products more consumer you know oriented products uh, came and then i will say that after 2018 now many companies invested a lot of money and we have different types of devices uh, it's not only for the theater we have the stand alone even mobile based also so samsung also entered the market and uh, there was there is huge competition among uh, different and then apple <coughs> apple is also thinking as we know and uh, then we have uh, the facebook got uh, oculus and then the uh, more sophisticated devices uh, have been developed so now we have the oculus quest and then we have the meta so which is more sophisticated easy to use so this i will say that uh, it's more consumer oriented things are coming and even the people uh, common people they are taking this and using it for gamification or some other purposes are there it's not only limited for the industrial training or some uh, medical training it's a uh, common people are also using this kind of devices for the entertainment purpose i can say so i think uh, mixed reality is basically um, a combination of the features or elements of augmented reality and virtual reality as we know that when we are talking about virtual reality fully immersive virtual reality you are totally disconnected with the real world okay and uh, on in the case of augmented reality you are using the handheld devices you are still in the real world and you can play with the virtual uh, or digital content that is overlaid on your screen now the mixed reality the dig uh, the the basic uh, there is a clear differentiation or difference between um, augmented reality and virtual reality okay but there is a thin line difference between mixed reality and augmented reality because in both the cases you are in the real environment you can see the real environment and you can play with the virtual content but the what is a basic difference is that you know in mixed reality basically you have the gesture based okay interaction you can have the voice recognition so that can be applied and the degree of interaction and immersiveness is much more as compared to the augmented reality because we have the sensors and uh, tracking sense which is uh, taking account of your physical uh, surroundings in the mixed reality that is giving uh, the system more awareness of the and it's much more giving the flexibility to the uh, user to 
manipulate the virtual objects as compared to the augmented reality so this is the basic very fine difference between augmented reality and mixed reality sometimes people um, get confused between you know mixed reality and augmented reality but this is the thin line difference is still there see there there are <clears throat> i will suggest that uh, as number 1 um mixed reality is providing more uh, flexibility in terms of immersiveness and interactivity as compared to the augmented reality next thing is that why not vr the because there are vr is still a very young technology there are still many challenges associated with virtual reality number 1 is the cost number 2 the content ability number 3 people suffer the motion sickness issue number 4 the field of view is is still limited so these are some challenges are still associated with virtual reality and i think mr is the answer to that and uh, i feel that mr if if you ask me that you, what you will choose among ar vr or mr i will suggest that i will go for the mr because uh, you are still in the real environment you have the awareness about your physical environment and that is giving you much more better interaction and immersiveness as compared to the other two so i think uh, um, it's too early to comment on this but but if you see the past record of uh, of apple apple is known for its brand apple is known for its ecosystem apple is known for its products whether it's iphone uh, macbook ipad you know the quality of the product that they produce the design they provide they focus a lot about the seamless user experience so i personally have a lot of expectation from apple and i believe that if they uh, if they will enter the market of extended reality they are going to disrupt this market because of the design of the product and which of because of the user experience that they are going to provide this is my belief and uh, it's too early let's see when they launch the product we use this product and then we can understand how it is uh, different from other uh, big companies and also we need to see the cost also uh, what what will be the cost difference will be there i believe that uh, at present two core areas education and industrial training where uh, a lot of use cases um, we can find and even in the medical education also i think i will say three areas where a lot of application and it is really very useful so we have been doing a lot of research uh, because i as i mentioned that we do Uh, develop a lot of application for education domain and uh, and industrial training and uh, we have published a lot of research studies where we have found there is a significant difference in the performance of the participants and users when they are using this kind of uh, either uh, uh, augmented reality or virtual reality or mixed reality and uh, i think uh, this uh, uh, entertainment gamification you know the games so the next revolution you know the um, mr based or the vr based games uh, it is already started you know and uh, soon i believe if the cost of the devices will decrease so it is going to catch uh, a huge market so i worked before uh, joining iit kharagpur i worked for a uh, net dragon websort which is one of the largest gaming company in the world uh, china based so they develop a lot of vr games and uh, and they are capturing you know there is a monopoly by this company but i think no, um, now more companies they have understood the potential of uh, this technologies extended reality technologies and they are developing these games based on that you can see one very simple example pokemon game what was the revolution that has brought so uh, i am very much uh, you know the entertainment is another uh, area we are you know going to have, have uh, this type of technology is going to uh, change the dynamics yes you can see the devices in the past and devices now 
so you will find huge difference about the size about the weight about the ergonomics if you see so i think the more research is going on uh, specifically the more weight is because of the lenses that they are using so as the optics you know the research a lot of research is going on so if we can have the sophisticated uh, things and in fact i am just telling that uh, you know for augmented reality now we are going to have uh, a lot of research is going for the contact lenses you know once we that we have this contact lenses so you can just imagine how sophisticated it will be the experience you know even uh, we are also doing in our lab we are doing some research with the pci brain computer interaction you know so if you can think and then you interact so you it will change the dynamic from your eye tracking like uh, the eye matrix you know from your eye movement if you do the interaction so how it is going to change the dynamics so these are the future uh, research area which is already going on a lot of you know uh, and i think uh, in the next 4 years 5 years it will be possible uh, uh, to change the whole game of the extended reality by integrating this if only the condition is that if it is more sophisticated portable in nature at present this is not possible if, if you see the things but uh, uh, if we if we we have like a contact lens you know this kind of thing so it's much more uh, much more comfortable is there if you have the sophisticated glass right so it is much more comfortable so who wants to carry the smartphone is still heavy you know if it is lighter portable and providing more features as compared to the smartphones so people will go for it yeah so <clears throat> i will suggest that uh, um, when i joined iit kharagpur in 2018 still there was not much uh, talk about uh, this kind of technologies but uh, the government of india has understood the potential of these technologies and in fact uh, i'm just giving one very simple example uh, ncert which is uh, you know the core textbook uh, for preparing the toko test book and national curriculum framework also in fact if you read the national education policy 2020 where it has been mentioned that these technologies will be integrated for the educational purpose because the government has understood the potential understood the you know that can enhance the learning performance in fact ncert in the next ncert textbooks uh, there will be qr codes for the experiments where you are just scanning the image or qr code and ar based application ncert has also uh, center institute of educational technology which is a part of ncert they have already launched one ar application which can be uh, downloaded from the google play store and they are uh, it's an open source they are uh, they are creating all the contents for the augmented reality whether it's for the science whether it's for the social sciences so i am in their committee and i i, I remember so they have already identified around 3000 contents that is their target to convert into the augmented reality so this is just one example i am giving that in the education domain they are doing next if you see the psus big com- big psus they are they have already integrated um, uh, virtual reality training program uh, for their trainees so that is they are uh, doing we have a lot of startup companies are coming where they are developing the content we are developing this uh, technology the only concern for me is that the software part is fine the content development is fine india is doing good and i think i have a lot of expectation and i am very positive that india will be uh, you know maybe the front runner but uh, the hardware part because still when we are talking about the hardware we still depend on the hardware like apple or let us assume uh, stc or oculus or samsung which we need to import we are not manufacturing it right so the cost is high if you are comparing the cost if you are buying in us or in china or in taiwan and when you are purchasing the same uh, equipment in india it's it's huge difference is there so if we uh, i will suggest that our startups need to focus a lot there are some startups who are working in uh, development of the hardware uh, for virtual reality and other devices but um, the user experience is not so good so people you know they if they are giving the money so they expect a lot of things interaction and immersiveness that is the most important thing uh, they require but that kind of experience they are not getting from the uh, 
uh, our own indigenous uh, products. So I think a lot of research, a lot of R&D and support ne is needed uh, that we must have our own hardware devices. Then uh, scalability will be high and accessibility will be high. So in India's countries like developing countries in India, we need uh, technology which is low cost and uh, um, scalable in nature. Then only we can cater our population. I will suggest, uh, I will say that uh, they are very good in uh, hardware. So if you see all the hardware that are being manufactured and uh, if you, I am just giving one example, I will not name the company uh, in China. So the when the uh, Microsoft HoloLens was launched, it was, uh, I think the cost was around 2,500 USD. I'm just uh, recalling the price. And uh, after some time, after one year, so in Shenzhen, they have this company and <clears throat> within the one year, they developed a uh, hardware close to, I will not say it exactly HoloLens, close to HoloLens and that cost uh, half of that, maybe 900 USD or something like that. So that is the thing that China can do, you know, and that is the thing that China is ahead of us. So they are doing a lot of investment specifically for the uh, manufacturing and designing the hardware, which is much more sophisticated and low cost. And here the huge amount of money is there, you know, uh, because they are supplying all these devices to different. Japan is also doing a lot of things, but still, uh, if you see the cost comparison between China and Japan, so China is ahead everywhere. So in that area, that's why I said that in India, we need to focus uh, for this kind of development of our own hardware's indigenous devices if we really want to penetrate this type of technology in our country.